Hey guys, this is Austin. Welcome to the Baryon. This is a $1,500 gaming PC and it hits an interesting spot. If you spend a lot more than this, you're really gonna hit the law of diminishing returns. Sure, you can spend two, three, four thousand dollars on a gaming PC, however, it's really not gonna perform that much better than something like this. Kicking things off, we have the Intel Core i5 6600K. Now, when it comes to a gaming CPU, it's hard to beat a Core i5. Not only is this a quad core chip based on Intel's latest Skylake process, but it's also fully overclockable. So out of the box, you're getting a clock speed of 3.5 gigahertz. However, throw a little bit of extra juice at it and you're gonna get well above four gigahertz, no problem. You can upgrade to a Core i7. However, there is very little difference in performance when it comes to games. The main reason to spend an extra $100 on the i7 is if you want to do more intense tasks such as video editing. To keep things cool, we have a Hyper 612 from Cooler Master. This is a fairly beefy heatsink. It has six copper heat pipes, and it not only runs quiet, but it also gives you lots of room for overclocking. The real star of the show is that EVGA GeForce GTX 1070 graphics card. This thing is no joke. Not only is it based on Nvidia's new Pascal architecture, which means that it's fast and it clocks really high, but it's also the EVGA superclocked variety, which means that it's clocked even faster than the stock version. It's outfitted with eight gigabytes of GDDR5 memory, which is more than pretty much any game is using at this point. Now on top of that, this thing is seriously fast. As you'll see a little bit later on, it pushes some crazy pixels. The Baryon can also handle VR. So I'm using the Oculus Rift right now. However, it also is totally compatible with the HTC Vive. And not only does it run it completely smooth, but it's actually quite a bit above the minimum spec, which means that this should be able to handle VR for quite a while to come. Yeah! You can also kill stuff too, that's the best part. For the motherboard, we have the ASUS Z170A. Now I've gotta say, this is probably my favorite motherboard out right now. Not only is it fairly cheap, but it has all the features you might want and then some. You've got plenty of USB ports, including a dedicated 3.1 and a USB Type-C. You have an M2 slot for a super fast SSD, which we're using for this build. And it's an ASUS port, which means that it's built well and it's gonna get plenty of BIOS updates. It's a really solid all around package. For memory, we're using 16 gigabytes of Corsair Vengeance LPX memory. Now 16 gigabytes is actually kind of overkill for gaming rig. It's really more for being able to do extra stuff like video editing or, you know, using Google Chrome. For the SSD, we have something a little different. This is a 256 gigabyte Samsung 950 Pro. Now as an NVMe drive, this is way faster than any other normal SATA SSD. You're looking at write speeds of around one gigabyte per second and read speeds well over 1.5 gigabytes per second. This is one seriously quick drive. Backing it up, we have the one terabyte WD Black hard drive. Now this is going to give you some much needed extra space in addition to the SSD. It might not be as fast, but it's a perfect place to store extra Steam games and other random files that you don't need to keep on the SSD. Powering everything is a 750 watt EVGA Supernova power supply. This is going to be more than enough for the build as is, as well as if you want to do some upgrades, it's 80 plus gold rated, and it's a modular supply, which means that you can have some nice neat cable management. Or not, it's up to you. Housing the Baryon is the Fractal Design Define S. I really like this case. Not only is it a large chassis with plenty of room for upgrades, but it also has some really nice cable management options. Paired with that nice big window, you can show off your build in all its glory. This can handle some pretty intense 4K gaming. So in GTA 5, we're able to play on very high settings at 4K at around 54 frames per second. Moving on to Shadow of Mordor, the 4K train keeps on rolling. So here, we're able to play on ultra settings and we're still getting around 52 frames per second. Jump into The Witcher 3, and we do have to turn the settings down to high at 4K, however the game still looks fantastic, and we're getting about 40 frames per second. Moving to a DirectX 12 game, we have Ashes of the Singularity, which really does put a lot of stress on the system. Here though, on extreme settings at 4K, we're getting 42 frames per second. At $1,500, the Baryon really does hit the sort of high-end sweet spot. As always, I will have all the links you guys need in the description of this video, and if you enjoyed, make sure to subscribe for more PC builds like this.